How's it going everybody? Today we're going to do question number 253, meeting rooms number 2. Last week we actually did meeting rooms number 1 and for those who haven't seen that, just check the playlist or check a link down below for meeting room number 1. Um, the reason I chose to do number 2 is because this is a good example of how uh, when you go through an interview, someone can evolve a question. It may sound similar but is quite different. Um, and the complexity will be slightly harder, but it's not too bad. So what we're gonna do is first try to read the question, understand it, um, I'm gonna visualize a couple of uh, scenarios, and then we're gonna code the problem, okay? So stay tuned. All right, let's read the question. Given an array of meeting room time intervals consisting of start and end times, S1, E1, and so on and so forth, Find the minimum number of conference rooms required. All right, so for those who are not aware from the previous question uh, for meeting rooms number one, uh, all we were, uh, just to give you a recap of what meeting room number one was all about, um, in meeting room number one, all we had to do was to understand uh, whether or not I could attend all meetings, right? Given uh, basically an array of uh, tuples which gives me the start and end time. Um, but for meeting number two, this particular question, I'm being asked um, how many re rooms do I need such that I can uh, effectively um, fulfill all the meetings that are scheduled, right? So one thing we need to understand um, from the previous question, meeting rooms number one, was um, all we had to do was find overlaps, right? But in question number two, those overlaps should result in a new meeting room, right? Because, you know, if you can't attend those meetings from the previous question, therefore you're gonna return back saying, oh, sorry, I can't attend. But the, this question, instead of doing that, maybe we had to do something a little bit more, right? So once you identify that overlap, um, then you have to actually create um, or in, in increment somehow um, another meeting room. Right? So uh, this question is very similar to the previous one. However, um, there's a slight twist. All right, so let's look at an example. Let's bring this sheet here. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna use an example here where I have, you know, four intervals, right? And we have to determine how many rooms I need, right? So when we look at this, if we iterate it um, through here, what do we see? What do we see? We see that okay, this one starts from zero to thirty, right? So I'm going to create a room. Say, I open up one room that starts from zero all the way to thirty, right? That's cool. But when we look at the next element, we look at okay, well, this starts at one but ends at five. Um, this actually starts way before it ends. Right, so effectively what we need to do here is open up a new room, number two, which is gonna be from one, one to five. Great, so we look at the next interval too. All right, whoa, this starts at two, right? And ends at three. Well, it starts also earlier than the 30th, right? And it starts also earlier than five because that ends at five. So what do we need to do here, right? We need to create a third room from two to three. Two to three, right? And then when we look at the last element, it starts at seven o'clock to 10. So seven o'clock, well, that is definitely starting before the first room is available. Um, but we could check the next one. Oh, is it available on this one? Sure, it is, and it's also available here. So we can actually slot in um, something, like, you know, arbitrarily here, it doesn't matter. We could slot in a seven to 10 o'clock, right? So in this example, you can see that all we really need to do is compare the starting time and effectively the earliest time available, um, which my start, where I can slot in my next meeting, right? So this becomes a little bit more easier, right? So all we have to do ensure is that, okay, well, I have to make sure that these guys, as I slot it in, right? I have to make sure that, you know, 
there's a critical part we need to do. Remember from our previous question, we have to ensure that we have no guarantee in this question saying that this is sorted. So one of the things that we have to ensure to do is sort the array by the starting time. This is important because if we do that, then we ensure that as we create new rooms and those things like the end times are actually in a certain order, right? Um, and all I have to do right now is take the starting times and compare it to the latest or earliest available um, end time of my existing rooms and see if that start time is less than or greater than uh, my end times, right? So if it is less than, well, uh, then I have to create a new room. But if it's greater than my end time, then I can just basically pack it in. And when I pack it in, then I know that is my that time that slot has been filled and effectively um, I can't use that room anymore, right? So let's try to put some code uh, to solve this problem to have a little bit more better understanding. All right, cool. So let's get into code. All right, one of the things, like I said before, we have to check for edge cases, right? What if I'm only given um, one slot time slot, right? If I'm only given one time slot, then I might as well just return that back to them. I don't need to tell them like, oh, I need to create a whole room. So I'm going to check if my intervals, right, dot length is less than two, right? If it is, then I'm just going to return uh, one as an example, right? Um, or it can return the intervals dot length, but I'm just going to return one for now because, you know, if you only have one room, then you will need to create one room. Great, that's good enough. Now the next thing is we have to sort the el uh, elements. So intervals um, dot sort at A, B. Here, let me create this here. All right. And I need to return the A at position zero minus B at position zero, which is effectively the start times, right? Uh, and then close this bracket. Great. All right, cool. Now that we have things sorted um, by the start times uh, of the tuples, what do we need to do, right? Remember when we looked at the diagram, we need to start tracking something, right? To make the decision whether or not we create a new room or not, right? Um, and one thing I like to track or we should track is to check, well, when is the earliest end time that we already have uh, for our current uh, rooms? Right, so maybe I'm gonna creating like a a uh, uh, early room time, right? Earliest room time available. I'm gonna make it such that it's an array, right? And an array of maybe basically I'm gonna populate it first with the intervals at zero, uh, one position. So what I'm really doing is saying that okay, well I know I have one uh, slot that ends at thir thirty right, just to start it off. Um, and that's the earliest room available, right? So when I get to the next step, I'll go like, okay, well, this one starts at five o'clock. If I check the earliest room is only gonna end at 30, then well, I'm gonna have to create a new room, right? So I'm gonna have to create more rooms, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So by determining, by having a length of the earliest room time, we could actually determine how many rooms are gonna be available, right? So maybe a better name is gonna be uh, rooms. I'm just gonna just call it rooms, room time, room time. All right, cool. All right. And then what do we need to do next, right? Now we have to effectively um, iterate through the intervals, right? So for, let's go let i equal to one, right? And i is gonna be less than. The reason why I'm bringing i equal to one because we pre-populated with the first value. Um, okay, so intervals in intervals dot length and I plus plus, right? So we're going to iterate through everything and I'm going to extract certain things from each element. I'm going to extract the start time and the end time from the intervals, intervals, uh, I can't spell, intervals at position I, right? This is, uh, don't mind this like type of syntax, it's basically um, a fun way to write a set, write this, basically it's the same thing as saying, okay, start equals to interval at, you know, I at zero, zero, 
and also like end time at one. Um, this is basically using the spread operator um, and effectively signing the first variable to like zero. Uh, the second variable that comes up is going to be the end time. So it's, it's just a simple way. Uh, I like to keep it here. Cool. So I have the start and end time here, right? The next thing I want to do is ensure that I have the uh, latest room time, right? So what I'm going to do right now is let uh, latest or earliest earliest, I think I how to spell it, earliest uh, will equal to the math dot minimum of the room time, right? So we're going to basically say, what is the earliest time a room is available in this array of rooms that are booked? And of course, I'm using a spread operator again to effectively, what it really does is saying that, okay, if I have 30 here or and 10 there as an example, all it's going to say is like, okay, well, I'm going to make sure it's got 30, 10, and check it that way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So now that I have the earliest time in the, in this current case, it's going to be 30 because we pre-populated that already. Right. Um, and our first start and end time, just to let you know, is going to be the five and 10, right? All right. So what do we need to do? Right. All we really need to do is check if my start time, right is going to be less than my earliest earliest time available on the rooms right because i need to check if if it's not then what do we do right we're going to create a room so i'm just going to go and room time dot push the end time right so what this does is going to push the 10 into this interval right uh, because, you know, the earliest time that this is available is 30 and definitely this uh, start time at 5 is not going to, is less than this, right? So therefore, we're going to have to push the end time in here, right? Cool. And otherwise, what do we do? Otherwise, we are just going to um, go back into room time, right? Uh, at that room time. Uh, dot index of and I'm going to say earliest right so I'm going to go back to the index of where that particular value I'm looking for right um, and I'm going to make that equal to my end time right so effectively it's the same case of okay well if I could book that room uh, I'm just going to change the five o'clock availability to the latest one um, available okay cool so that's that um, and finally what we can do here is return return the rooms um, room time dot length. All right, cool. So to go over this real quick again, uh, all we really do is just check whether or not we start before we and an, an earliest available end time would be, um, and then once we do that, we just check how many rooms have been booked after this process. Now, uh, this solution should provide a solution. So let's check and see if it does or not. And boom. Ooh, I messed up here. Hmm. Ah, the edge case. See, some things that you need to catch the edge case. We can't just return one, right? We probably should just return the intervals dot length here. So when it's empty, you'll just return a zero. Great. Solves the question. Awesome. Now, here's the fun part, right? What is the time complexity of this thing? And also, what is the bottleneck of this right now? How can we improve this? Now, I'm going to leave this so you guys can think about it a little bit. Um, however, one way to improve this algorithm, or at least know that, um, you know, somewhere it can be improvements, can be thinking like, do we really need to store, or this whole thing of finding the index of a particular element, that's kind of like troublesome, right? What other algorithms allows you to find the latest time available? Think about it. In JavaScript, unfortunately, we don't have minimum heaps, min heaps. Um, you, have, you could build it up yourself if you want. Uh, I know in other coding languages, you could use heaps. But um, in this case, you will probably want to consider using a min heap um, to optimize this slightly further so you don't have to go do the whole 
uh, math.min and look through the whole array again. You can actually just pull up the top node and that would be the minimum element that you're interested in. And then uh, we just need to update that, right? Um, but for simplicity, for simplicity's sake, I'm not gonna go implement this whole heap thing because I'm lazy. Um, however, if you want some little study notes and if or if you're interested in me to go into dive deeper, let me know in the in the comments below and I can. Um, but for now, um, this is a good enough solution, right? Uh, for the time complexity here, though, if we look at it, what is the bottleneck here for time? This is you know n, n log n, right? Because it sorts, and this element is basically you know n right however yeah so i'll put i'll let you take a wild guess why don't you what you guess in this particular um solution what is the time complexity okay leave a comment below and uh for the one who gets it right you know mention a problem and i'll do that problem next time okay see ya peace